this point. It was black, it was dark. All these cars was like stopped in the middle of the road and I had to go to the bathroom. And what you think I had to do? What you think I had to do? I had a water bottle. What you think I had to do? You are right. I had to use it. I had to use that water bottle. And that's just how it happened for real, for real, because at the end of the day, I got me some new Jordans and some new shoes and some new clothes because I felt like it was time to do it. So that's what it was and that's what it had to be. What's good, YouTube? How's it going? How y'all doing? How y'all feeling, man? It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. And I wanted to give you guys some type of tattoo update video because this is like, this is coming along too beautifully, too smooth, too suave. And I just wanted to just let you guys see the update and how things was coming with the tattoo, how the things was looking. So I wanted to give you guys a little breakdown on the tattoo. Let's get to the video, baby. Before we get into everything, I want to give a brief little story time on my tattoo appointment and how everything transpired and took place because this is a very serious, funny, weird story. So I don't have my car. I don't have a car. So I had to borrow a car, if you know what I'm saying. I had to borrow a car to go drive an hour and 20 minutes away to go to my tattoo appointment because I didn't think I was gonna make it. I did not think I was gonna make my appointment. I thought I was gonna have to miss it because the way things was looking, I had to go to work in the army. You had to balance, do mandatory things that you have to do, but still find a way to make it, find a way to do what you have to do at work and then get off. So I had to battle the, the thought of how am I gonna be able to get to my tattoo appointment on Friday and then also do the things I have to do at work, get it done. So I had to talk to my platoon sergeant, find a way, made it happen, boom, cool. I somehow made it happen, cool. I don't have a ride. Like I said, I don't have a vehicle. So I'm calling everybody I know who can give me possibly a ride. Nobody can give me a ride. Boom, cool. What is that for? What is left for me to do? What else can I possibly do to give me Denver? So I had to make a way to finesse a ride. I had to finesse a ride all the way to Denver. So what else could I do to finesse a ride? What else could I do? You tell me what I had to do. What I had to do was I had to go to CarMax, rent a car for 24 hours, 24 hours, rent a car, rent a vehicle for 24 hours just to make it to my tattoo appointment. That's called dedication, right, ladies and gentlemen. That is dedication, dedication to the cause. You might be asking me why I have an artist that's an hour and 20 minutes away from you. Now, I have something to tell you for that because when I was deployed, I was deployed. And I have videos on that while I was deployed. That's when I started taking this YouTube stuff serious again because I felt like I had to get my mind off of what was currently going on at, at, when I was deployed. So when I was deployed and I was coming back, I realized I wanted a, a, a tattoo. It was time for me to get a tattoo, time for me to actually get serious with, with, with the things that I like. I wanted to start doing the things that I like, care for, tattoos, and, and actually make things come to life and look beautiful, as you're about to see pretty soon. That's why. And I originally was looking for things in my local area, but I couldn't ever find no tattoo artists that were in my area that was close that could actually do it. So I found some in Denver because there's a lot of artists in Denver. Denver's a big city, it's a, me it's a mega hub for a lot of things. So boom, that's how it happened. Long story short, he ended up being my artist. Now I finessed the ride from CarMax for 24 hours. I get there, no problem. We do a seven hour session. So he got a lot of things done. So it looks completely different from the original model, the shading and all that stuff. And he added some new things that you about to see really soon. Everything's going smooth. I had, some, I had a friend come visit me and it made things go a little smoother. Now the issue is that we're having is coming back home. So the tattoo ends at seven o'clock. I have to be back home at eight o'clock on the dot to return the vehicle that I had to borrow for 24 hours. Because mind you, the day prior, I borrowed it at eight o'clock. So I had to bring it back at eight o'clock on the dot. We finish around seven o'clock. I hang out with my friend for a few little minutes, like 10, 15 little minutes, and I'm gone. We gone. I'm sprinting down the expressway, sprinting down the E-way. I'm on pace to make it at like 8.30. I, I told a person to come pick me up, but my ride to come meet me at the CarMax at 8.20, 8.30, and I'll be there on the way. Everything going smooth. I'm blasting music with my little speaker. We pushing the whip. We gone. We, we zooming. Vroom, vroom, vroom. We gone. We pushing it. Then, then one thing just has to happen. One thing just has to happen to my to my whole success story. Obviously, I'm going to be a little standing on being 20, 30 minutes a little late because I'm supposed to be there at like 8 o'clock. But I was like, all right, I'm going to say something to you know, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, you know, something had happened. Something had a little popped up. Cool. But something had drastically changed and threw me off of my whole trajectory to be back on time when I'm supposed to be there. So we driving, pushing the whip. Cool. I estimated the ride will say 8.30. Cool. I'm driving. I make it to this one little exit. The little, I'm on the road. Then I'm going on, like on a little, a little side road on the, near it, like next to the expressway. But it's like one of them, like the one way lanes that go one way this way and one way this way. 
Yeah, one of them. So I, I reached the end of it. And then the expressway is like, you supposed to get off. So once you cross that, it's like a stop sign. And then you go to like, like the little bridge off point. And then once you cross that bridge off point, you go into the, the expressway, boom. I'm finna hit that right there, the little cut. And then it's two cones and then a the road says road closed. In my head, I'm thinking like, forget this, who around me right now? Because I'm about to just, cause it's two cones. I, and it was like a little space right here that I could have just cut through and boom, just kept pushing it. I would have made it on time. I promise you I would have made it. I would have made it at like 825. But something told me, you know what? Let me not do nothing crazy. This is not my vehicle. This is not my whip. Let me not do no crazy stuff. I decided to turn left and go down the detour route. And I just, I did it, right? Cool. And then I followed the reroute. And then the reroute, I went about five miles the opposite way, came the other way, and went back to where I came from. I was like, uh-uh, I can't do this. And when I came back, the police was there. Then I knew I couldn't I couldn't do it now. I couldn't I couldn't cut through the cones like I wanted to because now he was blocking it off. I was like, damn. I was like, damn, man. I should have just took it when I had the chance. Then I, I'll get out the car. I put my little, my little, what's the little thing? The hazard lights. Boom, press that. Somebody behind me. To the police officer. I'm like, excuse me, sir. First of all, I don't even want to talk to him because it's like, bro, like, this is embarrassing. All these cars just right here next to me and they see me walking up to the police car and it's just like weird. Like, I don't want to do all that. But I did it because I had to because I, I ain't had no other choice because how I'm supposed to get home. So then the police officer tells me to go down, go back where I came from, literally right back where I came from, and then make a left and make another left. Right, simple as that, two lefts. I say, all right, sir, cool, have a good day. In the car, do a little 360, 360, cool. Going back down the exact same route I came from, five additional miles, five more miles that I have to add on to the vehicle. Then after that, I go back, I make a left and I make another left. I'm thinking I'm doing good, right? I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm in the clear now, I think I'm Gucci, I think I'm, I'm, I'm fly, I'm good, we good, we gone. About 15 minutes go by, I'm back at the same place. And when I tell you that I was irritated, I was so mad, bro. Cause at that point, it, all, all hope was lost. All hope was lost. At that point, everything was everything that I had desired. I was already agitated, irritated, all that stuff, all in one because that's my second time. Second time. And the first time, I thought, cool. The second time, the police officer, he told me what to do. I did what he told me to do. And then he, and I came back to where I, I just came from. He looked at me like, I'm stupid. And I'm like, I did exactly what you told me to do, but came right back here. But the difference was the third time I came back around, it was two, three other guys that was there this time. So they, I, they explained to me, what was the problem? What's the issue? Like, you should you should have been gone. You should have been on that expressway flying. I'm like, yeah, I'm supposed to. Did exactly what the officer told me. Went down that way, made two lefts, came back this way. And they was like, two lefts? Uh, yeah, it's two lefts. And I was like, well, I'm back here. I don't know why I'm here. What you want me to do? And he was like, oh, snap, it's three lefts. It's three lefts you're supposed to make. I'm what? You said everybody else? Oh that it's two less and this and that, and I'm wrong. And I'm telling him, the, the police officer, like, yo, the workers that work at CarMax, he on my butt right now, you know what I'm saying? Because he wants he want his vehicle back. I need to be make, make some type of movement. And then the, the guy that was next to the police officer, he's telling me, like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's three lefts. So it's two lefts, and then it's another left that you got to make on that ramp. It's a ramp right there. Then you'll be good. So I'm like, right, bet, cool. One more additional left that I have to make. So then I go, it's already getting dark at this point. And I'm already, I'm already gonna be late. I'm already checking. I'm supposed to be back at like nine o'clock, an hour late, totally a whole hour late. So I make the third left. I found it, and then by the time I get onto the expressway that I'm supposed to be, everything was good for like the first five minutes. Then it was a red on your navigation, like a red line, a big red line, and it said for 22 miles, 22 miles, and it was like so many vehicles on the road. I didn't think I was gonna make it. At that point, I gave up all hope. I called the owner. I called him back. He told me to let him know all the everything everything that's going on that's transpiring because he doesn't want to uh, be reported as a stolen vehicle so i'm like i got you sir i'm gonna call you back every 20 25 minutes and that's what i did and then it was looking bleak at this point it was black it was dark all these cars was like stopped in the middle of the road and i had to go to the bathroom and what you think i had to do what you think i had to do i had a water bottle what you think i had to do you're right i had to use it I had to use that water bottle. So somebody behind me had the nerve to tell me, yo, real lights was on. Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed the show. I had to use the bathroom. I was not going to get out. And the car, the vehicle was almost on E. I think I was going to make it. I had lost all hope at this point. But somehow, some way, we, we made it through the hurdle. I eventually made it back. I called the owner. He's directing me, giving me routes and stuff. And I don't know any of these routes, but I'm like, okay, I have to pay I have to pay extra close attention to all these, these signs and everything and make sure I get back on, on track. About 30 minutes go by, 45 minutes go by, the traffic clears up, and then I make it to the right, the exit that he told me to make, 
And then I called him, I told him I made, the, I made it to the exit, I'm off the expressway. He told me, all right, cool, make these few lefts, make these few rights, and then you'll be back to center. I do exactly what he tells me to do. And then I finally, eventually, about after that, probably like 35 minutes after all of that, I eventually make it back to the shop where they were, two of them were standing there waiting for me. And he, he said he was ex-military, so he understands like how to communicate well, just explain to him where we were. Because in my head, I, I was like, you entrusted me with this vehicle and I just made all, your, all of your trust. And that's not what I like to do. I hate that. So I felt very, very bad as a person who was who lent the vehicle to me. I felt like it was in my best my best interest to just show the sorry for all the things that I want to do. I was trying to put ass in the in the vehicle. He said, no, just bring the uh, vehicle back. And he wasn't tripping about it too much because he said three days prior that they had a vehicle that was reported stolen, which is exactly what they didn't want to do with me. So I brought it back in good condition, perfect condition. And I got back home as fast as I could and as safe as I could. But with all that to be said, that was just my little crazy story time about how I got my new tattoo, the, the, the updated version of the tattoo, and what I had to go through. How I almost didn't make it back or even make it to the appointment. But with all that being said, I want to show you guys this tattoo, the new updated official version of the tattoo. And I still got some more to do, but this is the most recent up-to-date version of the tattoo. Let's get to it. As you can see, there's some slight differences. There's a shadow right there of another building. There's the, if you could tell, there's uh, branches and it looks like cracks and everything, but it's, it's the branches in the in the building. There goes the train tracks with the kid right there. Let me see if I can get you guys a better view. Train tracks with the, the kid right there and there's like little rocks. All of that. And right here, he's gonna finish it up. Some trees, he's gonna probably add another shade of a building. But as of right now, this is what it looks like. And it's coming out so, so fire. This is so, so fire. This is the tattoo and I could not be more happy. It came out the way I wanted it to come out. Even better than the way I wanted it to come out. This is amazing. This is a blessing to me and I'm grateful. That, and uh, I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys who decided to watch my channel. Make sure you like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and tell me how you feeling. All y'all.